Hello and welcome to the Jackson State Sports Highlight Show. I'm your host, Rob J. For the second week in a row, Jackson State University is mourning the loss of a sports legend. In this week's show, we're going to take a look back at the life of Edward S. Bishop Jr. Also in this week's show, both the Jackson State men and women basketball teams tipped off swag play as the Tigers and Lady Tigers hosted Alabama State and Alabama A&M. But up first, we began on a sad note. Edward S. Bishop Jr., a former Jackson State athlete and announcer, was laid to rest following a one-car fatal accident here in the city of Jackson. Mr. Bishop, he was a pioneer in the state of Mississippi. He became the first African-American television news anchor in the city of Jackson, as well as an entrepreneur and a stellar athlete here at Jackson State University. He was remembered as a pioneer. Yeah, 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 that, that, that's the thing that gets my motive to really go in. There is a reunion. The scripture declared it to be so that some glad morning when this life is over. The life of broadcasting pioneer Edward Bishop Jr. was celebrated during a memorial service Friday morning at the New Hope Baptist Church in North Jackson. That was Cousin Edward. He wanted excellent performance. He wanted you to be the best. He wanted to be the best. He encouraged his family and his children to be the best. When he coached, he, he encouraged uh, his players to be the best. I was a neighbor of Mr. Bishop for the past about 11 years. So I knew him really well. We were really good friends and he was a good neighbor. And um, I know there would never be another Mr. Bishop. I used to tell him all the time what a good neighbor he was. And we just loved each other. Anytime he had a problem or anything, he always came to my door. Ed and I were business partners. And uh, Ed saw me one day, he said, look, my company's getting ready to hire another man. Before becoming an established entrepreneur, Edward Bishop made history by becoming one of the first African-American television news anchors in the state of Mississippi. The year after I graduated from um, Jackson State University in communication, we began to co-anchor the news together for WJTV TV 12. He was the first African-American male uh, in this state to anchor a newscast. I was the first African-American female to anchor a newscast at WJTV. Um, I can remember Mr. Bishop being in my home so much because my mother was his mentor. He made a mark on this community. He made a mark on this state because he did so many things that constituted being a first. He was a phenomenal man one of which had a great impact on my life and had a great impact on the community. He was a trailblazer who fearlessly worked in television news when not a lot of African Americans did. He was one of the first, one of the first African American television personalities in the state of Mississippi. He originated what we now call talk shows. A man of many talents, Bishop once served as the public address announcer for Jackson State football and the marching band. His sudden passing leaves a huge void to those whose lives he touched. Danny had a way of making everybody feel like they were number one. I don't care who they were. You know, nobody, everyone was important. Even us, you know, we, 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 we were big in his eyes. You know, he would always talk to us and ask us our opinions. It was amazing. He would always talk to us. In spite of his physical departure from this world, he still serves as a representation of masculine elegance, steadfastness in love and morality, and in the concreteness of values. I followed his career throughout uh, his, all the professions he's been in. He's been successful in everything he's done. And I really admired him because he was one of the early uh, uh, African-American broadcasters, uh, TV that is, here in Jackson. And certainly I followed his career as a, uh, I think he sold me some class rings and some pictures and all that during uh, uh, my, my years at Brinkley High School. So uh, the community has lost an icon of a businessman, of a, of a, of a media man, and uh, a good Christian man. And 
it's just unfortunate that he had to leave us the way he did and not live out uh, uh, some more, more quality years of, of his life. We're going to miss him. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. Mr. Bishop was 82 years old. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Jackson State men and women as they hit the hardwood for the first time in swag play this season. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. What does it mean to be healthy? It means finding the steps you take today that lead to a healthier tomorrow and knowing you have a partner on your wellness journey with the compassion of a cross and the security of a shield. Because at the end of the day, it means you, your health, your life, and all its possibilities. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Live healthy. Live blue. It's good to be blue. Carlos and Richard are like brothers. Their friendship goes back to childhood. Both have successful careers. Carlos became a computer programmer, and Richard owns his own business. And even though they chose different paths, they still have one thing in common. They both joined Hope Credit Union. Hope had everything they needed to get their financial plans in order, and now things are really beginning to pay off. Get your finances on the right track. Join Hope Credit Union today. Hope Credit Union. Better banking, better lives. I'm one. I'm one. We are one. One choice. One community. One family. All united by one university. Jackson State University. Welcome back to the Jackson State Sports Highlight Show. Following a rugged non-conference schedule, both the Jackson State men and women basketball teams open swag play against Alabama State and Alabama A&M. The Tigers and Lady Tigers have added several key pieces to this year's teams, and Alabama State would be the first to test the new and improved Tigers and Lady Tigers. Here's a look. Jackson State Lady Tigers senior Derricka Wiggins deserves an applause for the way she has opened the season. In the last two games, Butter, as she is affectionately known, averaged 21.5 points per game and has become the newest member of the Jackson State 1000 Point Club. Uh, absolutely. I'm so excited about it. And uh, Derricka Wiggins right here, we call her Butter. She's smooth like that. Uh, she got her 1,000 career points for JSU on the last game. And, uh, you know, this conference has overlooked her for the last four years. She will be first team all conference this year. And the 5'7 senior from Memphis, Tennessee, number 21, Butter Wiggins. Wiggins led the Lady Tigers with 23 points in their SWAC season opener against Alabama State. With Butter leading the way, JSU opened the game with a 6 0 run. Jasmine Redmond helped JSU build an eight-point lead before Bama State stopped the run with a jumper by Shamaya Smith. In fact, the Lady Hornets made a run of their own, closing the lead to four in the first quarter. Marnesha Hamer then made perhaps the move of the night with the spin move in the lane for the bucket. Move, Hamer! Kawhi Perry added two as JSU led by eight late in the first. Kawhi Perry! The Lady Tigers continued the onslaught when Janie Talley lays it in, building the lead to 13. JSU stepped up its defense as MC Smelser takes the charge, which will lead to a baseline jumper from Jasmine Redmond. Um, well, you know, it, it just took us a little minute to get back in our groove after halftime. Uh, you know, sometimes we get ahead of ourselves and we may think that, hey, we're the best, the bigger team in this situation, and we have to learn that it's not about that. It's about finishing through the end. And, um, you know, it was tough, but we got through it. <laughs> Christina Ellis. Christina Ellis helped the Lady Tigers build a 15-point lead, its largest of the night. 
Mo Hamer scored 12 points and was one of three Lady Tigers in double figures as JSU went into the break with a 10-point lead. Um, I just feel like it took us a little minute to get our momentum, but after we got our momentum, we won, you know, we got in the groove, we played how we supposed to play. Um, I feel like at the second half, like, we, I just feel like we had got comfortable, but we had to realize, like, we was better than that team. We came home with the victory. The second half proved to be a different story as Alabama State outscored JSU 21-14 in the third quarter to take a two-point lead. But behind Mo Hamer, the Lady Tigers tied the game late in the fourth. Wiggins then nailed a late three-pointer and the Lady Tigers opened swipe play with a convincing 70-61 win over the Lady Hornets. I mean, we really, we listened to the coach the whole way. Like, she basically kept us humble, kept everybody ahead in the game. And, like, everybody was just basically trying to maintain the one goal was to win. Because we had, we always learned to, like, just keep our composure, and we have always worked together to learn that no matter what, when adversity hit, just always fight through it, no matter what. So we just had to buckle down together and just play as a team, and that's how we won. Without my team, I know we couldn't do it tonight, so we just, Played as a team and we came home with the win. Coach, congratulations. Uh, is this, how big of a win is this for you to beat a team like that? Oh, this is a big win because everyone knows Alabama State is always tough and they're going to come to play and they're not going to give up. So we just have to keep, uh, keep our foot on them and just keep getting better. We just got to work on it. I mean, it's not a – defense don't change overnight. We, keep, we just got to keep working. We got to keep working. But, I mean, I feel like we can, we can be a better defensive team. And, I mean, Coach, Coach Dixon, she's helping us with that. So, we just got to keep fighting and just keep working. You know what I'm saying? We, in practice, we're working on it. We just got to – everybody just got to get together on the, you know, right page and just, you know, we all got to fight. That's, you know. How will this carry you to win this game? Um, I think the momentum of us just being confident is what's key and um, what's going to get us through all the games uh, in this conference season. And just as long as we keep up the momentum, that's all that matters. What do you like about this team? I love that we know how to bounce back. Um, when we get constructive criticism, we don't take that personally. Uh, we've left our emotions in the locker room, and we just know how to get, get the train back on the track and just push forward, whatever, do whatever coach says. All right, anything else like that? Um, hey, Mom and Nana and Dad. On the men's side, Treshawn Bolden returned to the starting lineup for the Tigers against Alabama State, which didn't seem to be phased by the seniors' return. Reginald G put the Hornets up early with a jumper from the top. G extended the Hornets' lead with this bucket over Jeremiah Bozeman. Bozeman would respond, though, by getting the steal, finding Jeremiah Jefferson for the baseline jumper. It falls right into the hands of Bolden for the easy two. <laughs> Paris Collins gave JSU its first lead with the three ball from the corner. Three for Paris Collins. Paris finished with a double-double with 16 points and 12 rebounds. Despite the play of Collins, Bama State shot 44% in the first half and opened a 10-point lead. Bolden responded to that by scoring 12 points on the night and was one of four JSU players to score in double figures. Jeremiah Jefferson led all scorers with 21 points, and Jackson State comes from behind to beat Alabama State 82-73 to complete the opening night sweep of the Hornets. So the JSU men and women open swipe play at 1-0. When we come back, we'll take a look at Jackson State and Alabama A&M. That's coming up next. Stay with us. Thanks for nothing. The insurance company keeps giving us a runaround. What are we going to do? You guys need to call Richard Schwartz. Sugar, Sugar Ray, Ray Leonard. Leonard? Yes. You guys need help from fighting. Our attorney Richard Schwartz, when you're hurt in a car wreck, put some power in your corner. I'll help with your doctor bills, car repairs, and I'll fight to get you everything you deserve. He is a fighter, and I'm Sugar Ray Leonard, so I know a thing or two about fighting. When you're hurt in a car wreck, don't take on the insurance company alone. One call, that's all. What does it mean to be healthy? It means finding the steps you take today that lead to a healthier tomorrow, and knowing you have a partner on your wellness journey. With the compassion of a cross, and the security of a shield. Because at the end of the day, it means you, your health, your life, and all its possibilities. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Live healthy, live blue. It's good to be blue. 
Rachel and Bobby are proud of their daughter, Shelly, the first in their family to graduate from college. They've been working two jobs to buy Shelly a car, but they needed financing. So they went to Hope Credit Union, where the friendly staff found an affordable loan solution that met their needs. With great member service and solid advice, Rachel's going back to Hope for a home improvement loan. Apply for a loan with Hope Credit Union today. Hope Credit Union, better banking, better lives. Welcome back to the Jackson State Sports Highlight Show. Off to a 1-0 start in swag play, the Jackson State Tigers and Lady Tigers had no time to rest as they would play two days later against Alabama A&M at the Athletics and Assembly Center. Here's a look. The Jackson State Lady Tigers are off and running in swag play. After opening conference play with a win over Alabama State, the JSU Ladies are beginning to take control of swag basketball. The Lady Tigers got off to a fast start against Alabama A&M as O'Shayla Gray scored the first two points of the game. O'Shayla Gray! A&M's Kanisha Tharp tries to draw the foul on MC Smelser to no avail as the senior scores extending the lead to 4-0. That lead would grow to 7-0 when Derricka Wiggins drains a three-pointer. The Lady Bulldogs didn't get their first bucket until midway through the first quarter when Tharp hits from the top. Deshwana Harper made it back-to-back -back baskets for A&M with the steal and the layup. But Derricka Wiggins stopped the Bulldogs' run with a three-pointer from the corner. MC Smelser then scores in the lane as JSU outscored Alabama A&M 15-6 in the first quarter. MC Smelser. A&M coach Margaret Richards led her team to a comeback as the Lady Dogs tied it at 23 at the half. They did. I think I thought we started a little slow tonight, but um, they came out after halftime and really picked it up and challenged themselves to play better defense. So I was proud of their defensive effort today. In the second half, Alabama A&M showed signs of life, but JSU pulled away from the Lady Bulldogs. Wiggins helped JSU open the lead as she finished with 11 points. MC Smeltzer added nine for JSU as they went on a 9-0 run to lead by as many as 12 points. JSU maintained that lead and held off A&M 59-43 to open swag play at 2-0. Oh, that sounds fantastic to me. Uh, we had a lot of injuries on last year, so we, you know, didn't reach a lot of goals that we set for ourselves. Uh, so to be 2-0 and in conference right now is great. And uh, we're just trying to put one game at a time and keep it going. Coach, how do you carry this into your next game? Uh, you just, like you say, you take one game at a time. And, you know, we set a goal to win SWAC. Uh, regular season championship and you have to do that one game at a time it's not as hard as you think you just take one game at a time and you win that game and eventually if you win all 18 you're you're the SWAC uh, regular season champions so that's what we're focused on hit to butter but in the lane puts it in on the uh, Derrick is really focused this year. She has a goal to be first team all conference. Believe it or not, you know, she's been here and she's been one of our leaders for four years, but she has not accomplished that goal of making first team all conference. So she's really got her eyes on the target and she's working hard every night to reach that goal. And coach, two games in, what do you know about the team right now? Uh, I do know that they want to win and they're willing to fight. And uh, I'm excited they're playing for one another and they're playing as hard as they can play. And that's all that I can ask is that they give, come out and give their best effort every night. On the men's side, while Jackson State was focused before hitting the floor against Alabama A&M, JSU President Dr. William Bynum appeared relaxed and confident about the home team. The Tigers got off to a good start as Paris Collins buries a three for the first points of the night. Jordan Jefferson extended the lead with this acrobatic move to the rim. He'll give it to Jeremiah Jefferson, working at right baseline, and Jefferson scores. Jeremiah Jefferson. Then Treshawn Bowden scores on the hook shot, giving the Tigers a five-point lead. Bowden with the hook shot, and it is good. Mohamed Sharif's basket slowed down JSU's run for the moment, but Paris Collins comes away with the steal, and he goes the length of the floor and lays it in, keeping the Tigers in front. Sharif trying to bounce pass it inside, stolen away by Paris. Paris quickly in the front court. Paris puts it up, and it's good. 
Treshawn Bolden showed his touch from the outside with a three ball from deep, extending JSU's lead to eight. It was just a physical game. Coach let us know. Um, before we our shoot arounds, we had a difficult shoot around today. It wasn't a shoot around where we were standing around just shooting. Um, he came in, made everybody be aggressive, made everybody fight. Um, we was all just, you know, just focused. He made us uh, come in this game to focus, so that's what we did. Now, Treshawn Bolden to Paris Collins. Paris bumps into Trey. <laughs> Treshawn. Now he gives it back to Treshawn. Treshawn with a nice move inside, and the shot no good, but a slam. No oh, Rivers follow-up jam had JSU looking good early in the first half. But Dietrich Petty led AM on a 10-2 run as the Bulldogs tied the game at 16. After going into the break down by four, AM managed to tie the game again, this time at 44 midway through the second half. The Bulldogs took a one-point lead as Arthur Johnson nailed a three from the corner. On the right baseline, shoots it over. Bolden is good. But Bolden took over and led JSU to a comeback down the stretch as he finished with a game-high 18 points and 10 rebounds. JSU newcomer Julian Daughtry iced the game with a pair of free throws with 22 seconds left, and Jackson State held on to beat Alabama A&M 59-56 to remain undefeated in the SWAT at 2-0. Man, I can't even put it in words, to be honest, man. It's the greatest feeling because, man, being sat out last year, then had to come back this year and sit out another half of a year, it was just, you know, I just had to keep my head and, you know, Pray to God and just thank him for letting me even be alive. So, no, you know, he's been out a year and a half, and you know that's what we missed him with some last year, that big body in there. Then you're talking about a tough guy that knows how to talk and knows how to lead a team, and we missed that last year. And uh, even our early game this season, uh, you know, they only played in three of the pre pre conference games, so we missed him there. Uh, but I thought he had an excellent game tonight. I think he, uh, you know, with 18 points and maybe 10 or 11 rebounds, uh, he was solid, and more than anything, he was so positive. Uh, on the bench in the locker room. I'm starting to feel back like my normal self. Um, you know, it's kind of hard from trying to get back, you know, back to your old self. Like you just sat out for a year and a half, but I mean, I'm fighting it. I'm staying focused, praying to God, and I mean, it's getting me over the hump. You know what? Uh, you know, he's six eight, probably two fifty, maybe two sixty. Uh, not the most athletic, but he, you know, he's big and strong. So. Uh, hopefully, you know, he can continue to play. Uh, I think this probably was the most minutes that he played. We, we started him off playing five minutes, then we moved him to ten minutes. Uh, uh, and then tonight he, he probably was in the, in the 20s. So uh, we, we got to get him somewhere between 25, 28, maybe 30 minutes a game. And, and uh, you know, hopefully he can, he can make it through the season and get hurt. In the world, we definitely need him. Um, feels good. It's a big accomplishment, especially that who coming in is my first year. I just wanted to add to the team, especially after all the pieces they lost last year and a uh, key player, Chase Franklin, being out. So I was just glad I could step up tonight and my team could come together and get this dub. Had a couple of big shots, including a couple of free throws that you really needed. Does it, it feel like to win this kind of game close like this, does that give you guys a boost going into this next game? Uh, definitely. I just feel like uh, every play counts. So, um, I mean, a couple of shots I missed, but when it came time to make those two big free throws, I feel like I had to step up for my team. So I just did what I could so we can get the W. And my team could. What kind of look does Trey trying to give this thing? He gives a, he bring that energy, that that dog, that D. Cause uh, early in the season when we didn't have him, it's kind of dead. But when he came in, it's just a spark of energy. So he's like a real big leader, and kind of look up to him for what we need to do to win and be successful in the sweat. How were you guys able to maintain your composure when they took the lead late in the ball game? Tebow, Trey Sean, Trey Sean, Trey Sean. He uh, held us together. Uh, we came together as a team. A lot of the Older people and seniors, they uh, just kind of help us keep our head on straight and know that we still got the chance to win and we just need to buckle down, D up, and make stops so we can win. So Jackson State completes the Alabama sweep here in Jackson as the Tigers and Lady Tigers defeat Alabama State and Alabama A&M. Up next, Jackson State travels to Lorman to take on the Alcorn Braves and Lady Braves. We're back after this. Stay with us. What does it mean to be healthy? To create new traditions while honoring the old. To inspire future generations both at work and at home. To find that work can also be play. To find that reaching a goal is not the end, but rather another step along the road. To remember that to give really is to receive and to make choices today, keeping tomorrow in mind. 
Now's the time to know you have a partner on your journey with the compassion of a cross, the security of a shield, and the power of a card that opens doors to a healthier life. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Live healthy. Live blue. It's good to be blue. Carlos and Richard are like brothers. Their friendship goes back to childhood. Both have successful careers. Carlos became a computer programmer, and Richard owns his own business. And even though they chose different paths, they still have one thing in common. They both joined Hope Credit Union. Hope had everything they needed to get their financial plans in order, and now things are really beginning to pay off. Get your finances on the right track. Join Hope Credit Union today. Hope Credit Union. Better banking, better lives. WJSU 88.5 FM is a leading provider of cool jazz programming, news, and information to a diverse audience as a service of Jackson State University. Visit us on the web at wjsu.org. I'm one. I'm one. We are one. One choice. One community. One family. All united by one university. Jackson State University. Welcome back to the Jackson State Sports Highlight Show. The college softball season is just around the corner, and the JSU Lady Tigers are gearing up for the season. One JSU hopeful played in a big, big tournament in Florida. Her name is Shelby Carson, and she plays for the Raymond High School Lady Rangers. Here's a look. Raymond High School fast pitch softball star Shelby Carson has covered plenty of ground in her two years with the Rangers. A lot of it is raw talent, strength, uh, She's very smooth in her fielding ability, you know, uh, and versatility. I feel like I can put her anywhere on the field. The Lady Rangers sophomore shortstop has been selected to play in a national softball tournament in Vero Beach, Florida, the day after Christmas. Well, this honor I have, I've been invited to Vero Beach in Florida, and it's 88 girls that are from the nation that are going to be playing on 11 teams. Well, I was invited earlier in my eighth grade year to play in Oklahoma and train as well, and they've just been tracking me ever since to just come and play and invite, so I am very appreciative to have a second opportunity to play in Florida. With a batting average of over 500, Shelby will look to enhance her skills during the four-day training session where she will compete against players from all across the country. It doesn't matter if you come from a small town or what your capability is, that you can also have a chance to do something. It doesn't matter if you're just in some big high school or any large state. You can actually go anywhere if you just put your mind to it. We say good luck to Shelby, and hopefully she's on her way to Jackson State University. That's a look at this week's show. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back next week.